Once again, today's video is proudly sponsored by Kai Ki. This is THE Premier Thomas store, where you can find yourself a ton of Thomas & Friends engine toys, coaches, trucks, station props and more, from brands such as Tomy, Ertl, Take and Play and other Thomas toy brands. And by using the discount code USUALBLOKE10, you'll get 10% off your next order. And in so doing, will contribute to helping this channel grow. Link to their websites will be in the description. A massive thank you to Kaiki for the sponsorship, and on with the video. This engine is a Metropolitan Vickers Diesel Electric Type 2. The twins were abashed. We're sorry, Mr. Uh, uh... Never mind, he smiled. Call me Boko. <laughs> Boko is a diesel engine who works on the Northwestern Railway of the island of Sodor. He can usually be seen working on the Brendan branch line with Edward, Bill and Ben, but sometimes he could be seen running on the main line. Boko is a friendly diesel, sensible, hardworking and very stern to those who misbehave, but that doesn't mean he can't have a laugh every now and again. Unfortunately, he is a rather forgotten about character in the series, left in the dust of the classic series and has remained in limbo ever since. But, he still has a notable existence thanks to an unlikely fandom. I've been wanting to do a video on this for ages. I find Boko and his reputation in the series incredibly fascinating, and if you know anything about me, if I find something fascinating, I gotta spend a shitload of time talking about it. Today I want to talk about the history of Boko in the Railway series, how the show wasted him, and how some dedicated fans of the series each brought him back into the spotlight in their own ways. An undervalued character saved from the void. This is Boko the Diesel Engine. Boko's basis is a British Railways Class 28 diesel, with several nicknames like the Metrovix after the electrical company, the Crossleys after the Manchester based company that provided their engines, and the Kobos. This nickname came from their wheel arrangements, one chassis at the front with six wheels and another chassis at the back with four wheels which was a very unique wheel arrangement compared to other countries, but it allowed for minimal wheel slip. 20 of them were built in 1958 and 1959, with the numbers D5700 right the way down to D5719. The Kobos were sent to work at the Midland Division of BR's London Midland Region, used to pull fast overnight freight trains that ran from London to Glasgow. This freight train was called the Condor. Despite having that advantage of minimal wheel slip, however, they faced several engine failures and the cab windows kept falling out. Eventually, they were all sent back to their manufacturers in 1961 for engine repairs and were afterwards all sent to work at Barrow in Furness in 1962. Despite the repairs, the engine failures continued to be an issue on top of being very noisy and producing lots of smoke. The Kobos were withdrawn from service in 1967 and 1968, and by the end of 1969, all but one had been scrapped. The survivor, D5705, was saved by the BR Research Division and was converted into a carriage heating unit, until years later in 1985, it was preserved. D5705 is actually currently going through a restoration project. It resides at the East Lancashire Railway as the only surviving engine of its class. Quite a tragic history for a group of diesels that never got a chance to shine because of their faulty engines. However, they were never forgotten thanks to a very special book series. In 1966, the 21st book of the Railway series was published, titled Mainline Engines written by the Reverend Wilbert Audrey and published by Edmund Warder Limited, with illustrations by Gunver and Peter Edwards. Around the 60s was the time of British Railways' nationalisation plan, put into action by Dr Richard Beeching, where most steam engines across the country were withdrawn from service and scrapped in favour of diesels. And as a man who loved to bring real-life influences into the railway series, Wilbert Audrey started to lay the seeds of stories that would explain how engines on the other railways were scrapped and how the island of Sodor had become a safe haven for steam engines. 
to which the book brought us a brand new Diesel character for the series, Boko. A name from his Kobo wheel arrangement nickname, if that wasn't already obvious. With the number D5702. The real D5702 was of course scrapped with the rest of his brothers excluding D5705, but in the Railway series canon, D5702, or Boko, during his time in Barrow in Furness in 1965, found himself travelling to the Brendan branch line on the North Western Railway. The then fat controller at the time, Sir Charles Topham Hatt II, gained an interest in purchasing Boko for his railway, and so British Railways allowed him to keep Boko for trials. They were probably happy to get a noisy, smoky diesel out of their sight. The tests were a success, and Boko was purchased, where he continued to work with Edward on the Brendan branch line. One day, Boko took some trucks of China clay without realising they were for Bill and Ben, the tank engine twins, who were also new characters for the book. They played a trick on him, removing their name and number plates to make him believe they were appearing and disappearing in front of him, only for Edward to arrive in the nick of time and set them straight. They apologised and left with respect for Boko, who now saw the funny side. Edward smiled. There's no real harm in them, he said, but they're maddening at times. Boko chuckled. Maddening, he said, is the word. A series of events would follow that would cause the rest of the railway to respect him as well. The first was when he ran into Duck one day at the sheds after taking some trucks to Tidmouth. Duck was understandably suspicious of Boko, given he'd had a bad experience with diesels in the past. But after hearing that he was good friends with Edward, the two began chatting and quickly became friends themselves. James, meanwhile, took an immediate disliking to Boko, given that he and the rest of the three big engines were also tricked by the same diesel that was awful to Duck. But James later received karma for his prejudice when he was tasked with taking the express and a beehive broke open on the station platform, and a swarm of bees flooded the station, stinging him in the process. He left the coaches behind in an attempt to get away, and Boko was then called on to take the express in his place. After hearing of a branch line engine taking the express, let alone a diesel, Gordon was furious at the thought. His mind would soon change, however, when after a night of basically everything going wrong with the last express train of the day, Gordon ended up stranded on the Brendan branch line by mistake until morning, where he met Bill and Ben. Unaware of their mischievous cheeky behaviour, he legitimately thought they were being serious when they talked about taking him to the harbour and dumping him in the sea. Boko soon arrived and sent Bill and Ben away to get back to work, and Gordon, thinking he owed Boko his life, also gained respect for him. He and Duck would both later shut him, James and Henry up one day when they disrespected Edward for having trouble starting an enthusiast train, and after Edward severely damaged himself from breaking a crank pin but still pressed on to get the train home, Boko and Duck made sure Edward was able to sleep that night without any more snooty remarks from the big engines. Boko would take over Edward's branch line while he was being mended, and a while after he came back to continue working with him, he was now considered one of the family by the engines. The last engines he won over were Donald and Douglas after he helped them with a goods train. And after that, not much else was done with him, as he rarely ever appeared again. Wilbert would write his last five books on other engines and railway lines before his retirement in 1972. His son Christopher Audrey would take over in 1983 to 1996, with two other books coming out, one in 2007, and another closing off the railway series entirely in 2011. Christopher did next to nothing with Boko, so little that you'd swear he'd considered him just a side character or an NPC. He had a strong moment in James and the Diesel Engines where he showed a new diesel around at the railway who insulted the Fat Controller for having steam engines on his railway at all, only for him to leave the diesel alone to stick up for his friends while the mean diesel crashed into the sheds the next day, but after that, not much else. He tried to cheer Gordon up after he'd gotten into trouble for spraying ashes on a wedding party, and he helped him to barrow in Furness when his fire bar collapsed. He helped Edward when he broke down again and ran his branch line while he was getting an overhaul, he met Victoria the coach while she was being restored, and he later laughed at Donald when he smashed into some buffers. And that was it. A rather anticlimactic close for the character, for sure, and very few appearances since his introduction, but it is what Boko represents to the series that makes him that much more of a standout.
Boko was a genuinely friendly Diesel that was introduced long after Diesel characters had been brought to work on Sodor. The very first one, Diesel, was very clearly made out to be an antagonist in his only book appearance, Duck and the Diesel Engine, not counting the spin-off. He thought he was revolutionary, better than all the rest, despite being a company shunting engine, and later got his comeuppance when he was sent away for telling lies about the other engines. A pure negative mindset was established towards the idea of Diesel's on what was clearly a steam engine focused railway, hoping no other engines like him come to the railway ever again. Then comes a shocker in the very next book, The Little Old Engine. Scar Lowy returns from his overhaul, and he, as well as us, the reader, find out that things have changed on the railway since he was gone. Specifically, they now have a little diesel named Rusty, running maintenance trains along their railway. Literally, right after we had a book showing us quite possibly the worst type of diesel to have on a railway, comes a book with a really nice diesel. He helped Peter Sam after an accident with some slate trucks that would later lead to his iconic new special funnel, he warned Duncan of a bad bit of track despite him ignoring him and calling him names, and even when he refused to help Duncan after he derailed on said bit of track, he still went and did it to help his stranded passengers. He and Mr Hugh would also demonstrate how he ran the maintenance train at the quarry when the BBC visited their railway to film it. He later continued to show his worth in a later book, Gallant Old Engine, where he and Mr Hugh found a track bed that had been swept away in a torrent, and they and the workmen mended it. He truly was a one of a kind, just by being a friendly diesel. In between that, we also had Daisy in Branchline Engines, who arrived to help on Thomas's branch line after he ran into the station master's house. She was snooty, had a high opinion of herself, and refused to do goods work. But unlike Diesel, we weren't made to dislike her simply because she didn't run on coal and water, but because she was being a bit bitchy. Even Toby and Percy didn't have a Diesel prejudice against her, they were just fed up with her bad behaviour, which she eventually faced karma for. She was frightened by a bull on the line and hid away until Toby came and shooed it away, and she later got into trouble with the fat controller for refusing to deliver the milk tanker several times but was given a second chance after she worked hard after Percy's accident in the same book, to which she genuinely improved her behaviour and became a better engine, even later being referred to as a kind diesel by Percy in Stepney the Bluebell Engine when talking with Douglas about diesels on the main line. If I hadn't escaped, I'd have been cut up too. It's all because of young diesels. They're all devils, he added fiercely. Fair play, Douglas, reminded Percy. Some are nice. Look at Rusty and Daisy. There was also another Diesel in the same book with Stepney, who came to help with goods and the express trains, but he was more of a catalyst to break down and give Stepney a chance in the spotlight to pull the express with Duck, and nothing more than a plot device to remind us of how nasty Diesels on the other railways were. I'm saying all of this about the other Diesels because with Rusty and eventually Daisy, Boko's character feels like a very been there, done that kind of friendly diesel for the railway. The time period of his introduction was significant, of course, what with the whole nationalisation of British railways in the 60s, but he also didn't feel like anything new just by being a friendly diesel. I believe he was less of a layered character and more so a tool, used to show how the engine's diesel prejudice had changed over the years. You'd think, after their experience with one of the worst examples of a Diesel, they'd completely dismiss him. And some of them do at first, but everyone either warms up to him or welcomes him from the start. Edward defends Boko from Bill and Ben joking around, to which the twins apologise immediately and treat him with respect from there on out. Duck, who arguably got the worst experience with Diesels, goes from being a suspicious stranger to a very good friend to Boko. I love that when Boko is called to pull the express, Duck promises to look after his trucks while he's busy. Like, this is a diesel he literally just met, and he's promising to look after his train while he goes and does something else. Such a subtle little moment in the story that shows so much growth for the Great Western Pannier tank engine. Fantastic. Gordon, who first acts like his usual pompous self towards the idea of diesels pulling his express, starts to treat Boko with respect after he thinks he saved his life from Bill and Ben, as do the rest of the engines including Donald and Douglas, who, while they didn't face the same Diesel the other engines did, 
they nearly faced the cutter's torch because of their old railway sending them away because of diesels. So hearing them say positive things about Boko after he helps them out really means so much. And the other day they were heard to remark, For a diesel, Yon Boko's nee such a bad sort of engine. That, from the Caledonian twins, is high praise indeed. The only one who doesn't as of this time is James, but we'll come back to that. Boko may not have been a fully developed character, nor did he have any memorable moments after his introduction, and with the history of his real life engine class, he definitely had some missing potential. But he made for an excellent addition to the Railway series to showcase how far our old favourites had come. He was a hard working, humorous, stern, but also very kind, constant. Hardly ever in the spotlight, but always there. The way in which Boko was handled in the TV series was… disappointingly shallow. Very much like the books, he had a strong opening and slowly began to fade from the spotlight from then onward. So let's start with that. Like the other standard gauge diesels, Diesel and Daisy, Boko was introduced in series 2. However, because the stories of the Scar Lurry Railway were not adapted until series 4, Boko was introduced before Rusty rather than the other way around. That way, Boko was the first genuinely friendly diesel introduced into the TV series. Daisy was a friendly diesel of course, but she had to go through a character arc to get there first, short as it was due to them skipping the story Bullseyes. Whereas Boko was friendly from the start. This feels like a small yet effective improvement, but it was all downhill from here. Just as a side note for a bit of fun facts, but did you know that Boko and Daisy shared the same chassis and a lot of the same faces while being filmed on set? The big difference of course was that Daisy's face was coated in makeup. That does explain why you never see the two together on set. Very interesting. Boko had three of his book stories adapted in series 2, The Diseasel, Wrong Road and Edward's Exploit, but the story Buzz Buzz was skipped. So the line from Gordon complaining about branch line diesels pulling trains on the main line comes kind of out of nowhere because Boko taking the express didn't happen. It's not fair, rumbled Gordon. What isn't fair, asked Edward. Letting branch line diesels pull main line trains. Buzz Buzz was eventually adapted in the following series 3, but the story was changed to be more about James trying to get the bees away from clinging onto his boiler, and the plotline where Duck befriended Boko is removed as they are seen to be friends already. Which would make sense as Boko has now been on the railway for a while, but not getting to see that moment of them becoming friends, short as it was in the books, feels like a special part of it is missing. I do like that Boko already has an established friendship with Trevor the Traction Engine, as Trevor does work on Edward's branch line, but still, the episode kind of wasted this plotline. I don't know if any deleted scenes from this episode showed him taking the express after James left it behind, but for now, this episode left a lot to be desired in terms of Boko's story. Being fair to series 3, it did try to bring Boko into the spotlight again, with a shared episode with Edward, Bill and Ben with one of its original stories. The episode, titled One Good Turn, had Bill and Ben coming to help Boko with shunting his trains. The twins fell out over using the turntable and began badmouthing each other to Boko and Edward, which made working in the yard depressing. Boko hatched a plan with Edward and the Fat Controller to get the two twins to take his usual heavy goods train, which was too heavy for each of the twins to pull alone so they'd have to work together, and they became friends again. This episode didn't do a lot for Boko, but it showed he was just as wise as Edward when it came to keeping the twins in order, and just as good at thinking outside the box. More like outside the buzz box. <laughs> After that, he only made a few cameo appearances throughout series 3 and 4, before being brought back into the spotlight for what was unknowingly the final time in the series 5 episode, Double Teething Troubles, where he failed to stop Bill and Ben from misbehaving before they knocked each other off the rails at a set of points. 
He would then later bring some workmen to rescue a new diesel, Derek, after his cooling system failed, causing him to overheat on Gordon's Hill. This episode was his last active role in both the classic series and the TV series in general. His final, final appearance was in Stepney Gets Lost, in this piece of stock footage from Double Teething Troubles. Right here, just to the very side of this clip, this was the very last time we ever saw Boku on screen for the rest of the series. Mad. After series 5 came Thomas's first cinematic experience, Thomas and the Magic Railroad. And one of the most infamous things it did, apart from, you know, everything else, was excluding a large number of the well-established cast of characters and focusing solely on the main engines from series 1, minus Edward. Following Magic Railroad's poor reception, Series 6 was a back-to-business-as-usual series, ignoring the events of Magic Railroad and bringing back all of the engines previously excluded from the film, all except for two, which were Duke and Boko. Then, that same year of the series' release, Hit Entertainment bought the show rights from Ghislaine Entertainment, where within their attempt to reintroduce the show to a brand new audience, the cast of characters was cut down again so the chances of characters like Boko making a comeback went from unlikely to flat out impossible. Even at the very end of the model series with the extended special The Great Discovery and Series 12, which famously brought back character props we hadn't seen in god knows how long, Boko still didn't return. In 2015, long after the show had transitioned into CGI and had been bought by a different company, Mattel, Railway consultant Sam Wilkinson, in an interview with Sodor Island Fansite, stated that he was interested in reintroducing Boko into the CGI series. I couldn't find any other evidence of the interview myself, but given that nothing came out of this statement and the show is basically now over, it's probably not important. As much as they tried to keep Boko in the show the same way he was a constant in the Railway series, he always felt like an afterthought. Like, they would use him as a background addition and think, oh yeah, he's a thing, we should probably give him an episode or something, I don't know. Despite a decent run-in with merchandise and one-and-done books with the rest of the characters, his TV presence was short-lived. Which is really a shame. Like I said, he wasn't always a main character in the books, but hell, he was barely a character when Chris took over, but he never vanished from the railway entirely. How is it that characters like Bulgy, Trevor and Butch the bloody breakdown vehicle made it into CGI, but Boko gets shafted? It just doesn't make any sense. Being honest, given how some of our favourite characters were handled in CGI, a part of me is glad that they didn't bring him back, because chances are he might not have been the Boko we once knew from the model series and instead become flanderised. I just wish he'd had a good long run as a character before disappearing. He had a great start, began to fade away, and then finally took his leave, forever remaining left in the dust of the 90s. That is, of course, until the rise of a very passionate fandom. On December 4th, 2002, the Sodor Island Forums was created online, which later led to the creation of the Sodor Island fansite in autumn of 2004 a site created for the sole purpose of documenting history and information on the Railway series and Thomas and Friends, as well as allowing fans from across the globe to interact and talk about what they loved and tolerated from the series. A few months later, on the 14th of February 2005, the video sharing service YouTube was born, created for the sole purpose of anyone anywhere sharing any videos they wanted for thousands if not millions of people to see on the internet. This was long before it became the heavy business social media platform it is today, and so any videos that had big budgets and were massive high quality were minuscule around this time. That's pretty much all there is to say. And it didn't take long for Thomas and Friends to make its presence on the platform. <laughs> get it? Platform. I recall the very first Thomas and Friends video I saw on YouTube was this music video of the song Accidents Will Happen from 2007, made with Tommy Trains. Anyone else remember this gem? Yeah, it's definitely of its time, as the editing is very stilted, but it's still a cool window into the past of old YouTube videos. Let me know the first Thomas and Friends videos you saw on YouTube in the comments. 
So YouTube would continue to be flooded with not just Thomas Tommy Trains videos, but also Thomas Toy videos from Wooden Railway and Bachman. Then, that same year, came the videos that would change the future of Thomas and Friends content forever. In 2005, on September 30th, the game company NV3 Games released Trains Railroad Simulator 2006. Like all simulator games, it was made for the purpose to simulate how it felt to drive a real train. You could control any train programmed into the system, pull any type of goods or passenger trains through set out maps, or you could fuck about and derail them. You could even record what you did with computer screen capture softwares at the time like Fraps or even Screencast. I think you can see where I'm going with this. It's no secret that when there's a game released on a PC, a group of very dedicated computer programmers can mess around with the game's coding and add mods or patches. They can either be programs that change the foundation of the game, or just purely cosmetic. And with those cosmetic changes, came those who installed the characters of our favourite beloved kid show into the simulator. From this, once again, came people who made their own videos with the characters like the Toby Train days of old. The first Thomas Trains video I remember seeing was, again, a music video for Accidents Will Happen, which looking back on it, was just a compilation of Thomas characters derailing as the song plays, but this was just the beginning. Years went by, and as newer, more advanced train simulators were released, the quality of the Thomas mods improved, as did the software used to record the simulator. In 2012, a new fan series was started by a one NWR1991, titled NWR Tales. The first story he ever did was an adaptation of the Christopher Audrey annual story, Whistle Trouble, but his first attempt at making his own stories for the series was titled A Near Miss for Boko, where Boko gets to pull the express and nearly hits an enthusiast trying to take photos of Gordon while standing too close to the line, which I think was based on a real-life event of an enthusiast nearly getting hit by a train in Suffolk, but I'm not 100% sure. <coughs> It showed a new side to Boko, both a desire to pull an important train for the railway and a desire to be noticed in a magazine after hearing about the enthusiasts. Which actually makes sense if you think about it. His class was always pulling goods trains at night back on the mainland, so rarely ever did they get any recognition. Or this could be a meta joke to how little Boko had to the spotlight, but I'm probably reading too far into that. This wouldn't be the last time NWR 1991 would focus on Boko either. For the first episode of his third season, he made a prequel story looking at when Boko first arrived on trial, how he met the Scottish twins, and how he won them over. In the third episode of his fourth season, he adapted a magazine story written by Andrew Brenner, where Boko had to deal with a difficult new driver. In the fourth episode of his ninth season, Boko started to use a very special brake tender to deal with China clay trucks that weren't fitted with brakes. Plenty of story opportunities that were just sitting there, he took full advantage of them and crafted some great stories. Yeah, his older stories do suffer a bit from scratchy audio and the music being slightly off, as the only way to access the music from the show back then were very rough cuts of episodes that tried to silence out the narration and the sound effects. But the effort was still there. It was clear from day one that NWR 1991 knew who Boko was and didn't want him to be forgotten. And he was not the only Thomas fan on YouTube to think like this. The next fan project I want to talk about is what I truly believe has elevated Boko into the spotlight in a way far beyond what the books and the show ever did. The feature length production by Trained Assassin released in 2017, simply titled Boko. This short film covered Boko's entire class history top to bottom, from his engine failures, to the Condor, to the attempt to fix his engine before his class was moved to Barrow and Furnace, to his arrival and first few stories on Sodor, with so much more in between to flesh out the story, like when Edward breaks a crank pin pulling the enthusiast train, just like with NWR 1991's episode, we see Boko helping Donald and Douglas with a goods train up the hill, which leads to them respecting him, and right when you think the story will end there, it goes one step further and adds one more story event where Boko wins James over, by readapting Deep Freeze. For context, Deep Freeze was the last story in the Railway series book, James and the Diesel Engines, the 28th book of the Railway series, and the second book written by Christopher Audrey. 
where James's prejudice against diesels is changed after a series of events. The book itself didn't focus too much on James's development to liking diesels, and the last story really did rush his character into changing his mind. After his injector fails due to cold temperatures freezing his tender cap, he is rescued and taken to the works by an unnamed diesel who apparently just wins him over. And that's it. Trained Assassin took the initiative to fix this and in his version, James is rescued by Boko. And we also see their conversation leading to them becoming friends, which is so wholesome. Thank you. No worries. I've been helped after many a mechanical failure before. Well, the other engines are going to tease me forever over this. Why? My boilers run dry, and I still have a full tank of water. The day I like a diesel is the day I run dry with a full tank of water. Oh, is that why you're being nice to me now? <laughs> no. He now had no doubt that Boko was a good engine, diesel or otherwise. Boko was kind. Boko even has a little arc at the start of this special, when he learns not to push himself too far beyond his limits when trying to pull a heavy train meant for two engines all on his own, and becomes more humble as a result. This short film really did so much for Boko's character, and despite a lot of the production flaws like the sound mixing being a bit off and how the facial expressions never change beyond their vacant, smiling stares, they absolutely do not take away from the dedicated model work and passionate storytelling that gave Boko that development that the books and the show was missing, and would, in its own way, inspire other content creators to give Boko moments in the spotlight. Like Thomas 1, Edward 2, Henry 3, who would later follow a similar style in telling Boko's story of his arrival on Sodor as part of his NWR Origins series, a prequel to his own Engines of Sodor series as well as writing his own Boko story, The Great Railway Heist, showing a determined, heroic side to Boko. Or Victor Tanzig, who as of the time of me writing this, is planting the seeds for looking into Boko's origins in his Stories of Sodor series. Bluebells 5529, famous for making model adaptations of railway series stories, released their version of Buzz Buzz in April 2021. You know how Boko was called on to pull the express? That was an event of the books told with a simple line of dialogue, and we never actually saw him take the express. Here, we do see him take it, complete with Boko's fan-made theme by SA Music, and the results are just so wholesome to see. Then you get other little moments like Suddery Station Master's adaptation of Crossed Lines, another story of James and the Diesel Engines, where instead of being a story that follows the events of the mean Diesel crashing into the sheds, it acts as a sort of sequel to Series 2's adaptation of Edward's Exploit, where James's complaining about Diesels comes from Boko taking over Edward's branch line, complete with a montage of him befriending Trevor and impressing Donald and Douglas. This is just my opinion when I say this, but I think that this version of Crossed Lines and Trained Assassin's version of Deep Freeze should have been in Series 2 in place of Ghost Train and Woolly Bear. What? Don't get me wrong, both these stories in Series 2 are by no means bad episodes. Ghost Train is an iconic, spooktacular episode to the series with phenomenal set dressing, and Woolly Bear is a nice little story of a funny incident on Thomas's branch line. But if you look at their placements in the series, they do feel like the odd meat sandwiched between Edward's exploit and Thomas and the Missing Christmas Tree. I think it would have made for a more fulfilling end to the series had we gotten these versions of Crossed Lines and Deep Freeze. Picture this. Edward's exploit leads into Crossed Lines, with Boko taking over the branch line, which starts off James complaining about Diesels. Which would also be fitting for Series 2, given the stories with Duck and Diesel were in the same series. He gets a big head and his incident with the signal happens, putting him in disgrace. Leading into Deep Freeze, he's no longer boasting anymore, but he still has the diesel prejudice. His injector fails, leading him to get rescued by Boko, and they have their conversation that leads to them becoming friends, putting an end to James's prejudice once and for all. 
and just in time as the cold winter weather in that story leads into Christmas, thus Thomas and the Missing Christmas Tree. This could have made for such a wholesome end to the series and not make Boko feel like a last minute inclusion. I know why they included Ghost Train and Woolly Bear instead, because they wanted more stories with Thomas in them, but it was once again a missed opportunity that the fans took full advantage of. From origin story episodes, to extended scenes, to original stories, to his own short film, the fandom really did bring Boko back into the spotlight. With Mattel pulling the plug on the main series to venture off into focusing on the All Engines Go reboot, any chance of Boko being brought back has gone from however small it was before to pretty much zero. Therefore, in the mainstream media, he will forever remain a one-off character from the books that had a brief existence in the show before being forgotten about. And with the presence of other friendly diesels, both that stayed on from the classic series and new ones introduced later on, it's very hard for him to stick out. And so, if you asked any casual watcher of the show today, who is Boko? Chances are they would shrug their shoulders, not having a clue who he was. That is where the fandom came in, taking Boko and putting their own spin on his story. Not necessarily to try and shame the source material, far from it, but taking a character that was wasted potential and expanding upon him. For as little of a presence he had, Boko, in his own way, was a source of creative inspiration just by being who he was. Because a group of passionate people had that creative spark in their heads that made them say, what if we did this? What if we did that? What if this story was told this way, or that way? And it worked. And now, if you ask me or anyone else in the fandom, who is Boko? There will be no shortage of answers to say who he is. I believe what Boko represents to us now is that all you need to inspire people is to just be around. You don't need a grand legacy or to have been in the spotlights for people to recognise you, but instead, simply existing is all you need to do to inspire. With those content creators starting off small and eventually growing into their lifelong dream job that reaches thousands of people across the globe the same way the books and the show did, your existence gives others purpose in what they do. That is what makes Boko a very special diesel. Thank you.